So for example, we launched a small vehicle called the Fiesta in, the, in Europe, and then we just launched the last month in China. It's a big hit. So they like the modern uh, design, the modern uh, features. Um, and uh, you know, the, some of the idiosyncrasies, they expect any car over 200,000 RMB, that's about 25,000 US dollar, to have a sunroof. I mean, there's no way in China would you use a sunroof because you'll be black from the dust and the, and the dirt you know, coming in. But they feel that's a sign of luxury. So you have to have a sunroof. And uh, we made a mistake of launching a, a very nice product, a, uh, a, a minivan, and they couldn't sell. And we tried to understand why. They say, well, you don't have a sunroof. <laughs> okay? And I said, you don't need a sunroof. But I know, but luxury car have to have a sunroof. Uh, you have to have DVD. You have to have leather. All those things they, they expect to have which is not you know, the kind of demand you would have in Europe or the United States. Okay. And also the driving is different because if you've ever been a, a, a taxi in China, uh, they don't know how to use the stick shift. I mean, they go from first to second very quick and they, they lug the engine. You can hear the engine try to, to ramp up. So you have to design your vehicle slightly different to adapt to the customer expectation. Anyway, I can see that you can talk about cars all day. Uh, <laughs> are they, they drive, go ahead. One, yeah. thing. Uh, one thing that's interesting is most uh, senior business executives or business owners do not drive. Yes, in I China. know. That's what I was saying. They uh, it's interesting that uh, BMW has a slogan, the ultimate driving machine, and that's really trying to cater to people who enjoy driving. But actually, the owners of cars are not actually the drivers, the drivers. a lot of cases uh, right, because right. of. Uh, low cost of uh, labor and uh, the traffic, et cetera, so it's uh, Thank you. Different. So let's move from driving cars to surfing the net. Um, <laughs> Kaifu, um, can you tell us a little bit about, we, we've heard so much about the Chinese internet and how uh, everybody wants to become the next Baidu, uh, next Robin Lee, and people work 24 hours around the clock to come up with their own internet company. Um, how, does, how do you compete in a world like that when people will work for dirt cheap 24 hours a day? Okay, you're asking about Google's business? Yes. How, how would and in general, <laughs> the industry and the industry. Okay. Um, actually, I think most college students would rather be um, another Mr. Lee at another Baidu's competitor. But uh, I think... You mean Lee Kaifu? Uh, oh, oh that, that one, yeah. No, seriously, I think uh, the students do aspire to multinational companies. I think they see a higher level of integrity. They see that, you know, during recent... Um, various types of scandals and fake medicines and selling search results. I think there's a great respect for what the multinationals stand for. But that's probably not your main question, so I'll get to the compete question. Uh, Google China is doing very well, um, despite many multinational internet companies have, having withdrawn from China. Uh, our growth in China is probably 10 times more than our worldwide growth. Uh, we're gaining market share, and the market is growing very rapidly. Um, we're really selling the ads. The, the ad sales are very good. The um, um, search market share is going up. And I think the secret of our success um, is that we focus on the user. We try to build a very strong team. We build great products. And then we figure out how to make money later. And I think that fits the internet model, is that the power of the consumer is, that, is, is very strong. They can go to the competitor the moment they see a scandal or a poor result, or they feel that user experience, or they don't like your company. And, um, um, and I think Google's hard work in the early days to build a great search product. We have the best Chinese search engine. Um, and I think that's beginning people to notice that. So our market share has doubled in the past two years. And uh, we haven't worried about making money until more recently, mm -hmm. the past year or so. And of course, once you have, in the internet business, once you have the volume of traffic, the money will follow because the ads are basically connected to the search results. So having said all that, we're still number two in the market. Um, and we're still, it's going to be some, quite a ways before we become number one. But I think the, 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 the lesson to pretty much any, not just internet company, but any multinational, is that you have to be humble, understand the market is different, um, pay a lot of attention to the user, build products that fit the user needs. Um, and empower the local team to uh, build the right products and not build everything on a global platform. What are the two major differences b between the way the Chinese use the, use the internet and mm -hmm. the way Americans use the internet? Uh, well, one is entertainment. 
Definitely one is entertainment, and that spans a lot of areas. And as an example of how Google does things differently in China, um, we went and talked to users. They said, we don't use Google. We know you have a better search, but you don't have free music. We expect free music downloads. Until you have that, we won't use you. So it took us two years to, to negotiate 140 deals with the record labels to get a China-only free music download um, and added that service this March. So if you ever go to China, bring your, <laughs> bring your iTunes and <laughs> uh, go, to, go to Google and you can get lots of music, including American songs. So we, we were forced to go into that market and lose money initially, and hopefully over time, advertising will fund that. Because people love music. Music is the number one use of the internet in China. Not news, not search, not portals. Um, other example of uh, entertainment is internet games. That one Google does not participate in because it's not our strength. Um, but um, if you look at all the financial reports of the top Chinese internet companies, the ones with most amazing profits fastest, whether it's Giant Interactive, NetEase, Sohu, uh, Shengda, uh, they're all amazingly profitable. And this is because people are just addicted to these internet games. And I would say from a technology side, the Chinese internet gaming companies have clever uh, technology innovations, uh, especially with um, interesting uh, business um, ideas, you know, such as adding multi-tier marketing, uh, facilitating dating. Um, I won't go into details, but you get the idea. Um, um, uh, beautiful girl verification. Um, <laughs> the, these are wow. these are some of the ideas they've come up with. So that um, and why do they come up with that? They studied very hard. They're very humble studies of the user, and they found that the majority of their revenue, 90 percent of their profit, comes from maybe five or 10 percent of the users, mm -hmm. not these college students who are addicted, but these wealthy um, middle-aged men who um, want to live vicariously. <laughs> no, I, I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> who want to live vicariously and, um, and, and be a great leader. So these middle-aged businessmen uh, would you know, pay for an army of 50 people and spend four or five U.S. dollars, four, four or five thousand U.S. dollars a month um, to own this army. And that's where most of the profit comes from. And then sometimes they also want to um, find a date. So they provide that within the games too. So anyway, without going into details, the internet games are <laughs> addictive, they're very profitable, and certainly very debatable social value. So. <laughs> Let me just add a Please. remark. This is really you know, mind-boggling to see how internet companies evolved in the last uh, you know, 10 years. Uh, and if you look at the, the internet bubble <laughs> about 10 years ago, you know, 2000, uh, internet was the cause of all the problems. In fact, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, that particular crisis was more limited to internet, to IT, high-tech companies. Uh, and if you look at in this particular crisis, the internet company, in fact, exhibit an you know, exceptional level of resilience uh, you know, in China and also in, in states. And in China, uh, and actually if you look at the average users, well, it's about 20 or 19 years uh, younger than uh, those users in the United States. It's actually, if you look at the application, it's probably more unbalanced, uh, uh, both in terms of uh, the application and also the business model. It's balanced in terms of uh, the dis distribution of, of value. Uh, in the US, it's, uh, you know, it's ad and the search. But in China, you, know, you have a social networking, and those companies like Tencent, they're making money have an e-commerce company like Alibaba, they're making money. We have uh, you know, Baidu and Google, they search and ad, they're making money. And also you have uh, this uh, gaming company, uh, which uh, actually is non-existent in other parts of the world, except probably Korea. Um, and it's making a lot of money. I, I don't know why you know, they're making a lot of money, but uh, it's, it's, uh, if you look at some of the company, uh, like uh, Soho, like uh, Changyu, went to IPO uh, a few uh, weeks ago and actually doubled their value uh, it's in, in, in a few, few weeks. So overall, and I think uh, internet is becoming a key engine for uh, the world to come out of this recession. Uh, and I made that remark a few weeks ago in, in Boao. Uh, and you know, uh, incidentally, this is after uh, 
Premier Wen Jiabao, and he gave a keynote speech. He, he, he talked about the two critical factors for the world to come out of recession. And obviously, there's the stimulus package, all that collaboration, partnership. We talk about you know, confidence. We talk about hope. And I had a, a, a small meeting with him afterwards. I told, him, and I, I, I told the Premier Wen Jiabao, you should add the, the third factor, which is internet. <laughs> well, so